I've been getting back into Splatoon 2, what with the Octo expansion coming out soon. In the past, all I really did was play with fans, which unfortunately doesn't give you any experience points to level up. So this time around, I've been doing a lot of the solo level up-y stuff, which actually brought me to the ranked modes. I had strayed away from them because I've always been kind of hesitant about ranked stuff ever since my hardcore League of Legends days. But I dipped into it and hot dog did it open my eyes. All I've ever really done was Turf War, and now Turf War feels like one of the weaker modes to play. The rank modes add some more thought outside of I gotta splooge everywhere, which has a good amount of variety instead of just seeing the trash cans nonstop. Plus, in a lot of modes, you can adapt different play styles. However, since this was my first time playing ranked, I had to start from the low ranks, which means you run into a lot of peeps that don't know how to play. So that's what this mini series will be about. I'll tackle each of the ranked modes, and with Cyborg Chan's help, that's me. We'll give you some tips and info to help you rank up. But before that, if ranked and competitive games are your jam, then you're gonna love this shield time because this episode's brought to you by War Robots. War Robots is a mobile game that features some tactical 6v6 multiplayer right in the palm of your little hands. With rich 3D graphics and over 90 million players that have downloaded this bad boy, you're in for a treat as you bust down baddie bots left and right. Oh, whatever. I'll get bored of it after a week. Think again, because this app's sporting constant content updates with new robots, maps, and game modes. And these aren't some pushover mechs, these bad boys got some weight to them and you'll feel it as you attack and dodge enemy fire. It's nice to see a mobile game with the look and feel of war robots. My favorite robot is old Lancelot. Look at him. <laughs> Download the game using the link below in the description. If you install it right now, you'll get a big old starter pack filling you up with one griffin robot, two pin weapons, two Tulumba's weapons, 100 gold, and 400,000 silver. Heck, you can even get to downloading it right now while we're watching this video. I'll wait. Okay, that's that's enough waiting. Let's get back into it. So I think the easiest game mode to confuse people is Clam Blitz, because unlike the other modes, it is an ink spot, please. The game's about picking up some shellies and getting a stew going before dunking your clam in the basket. Hmm. So when you pop in, there will be a bunch of single clams here and there. Once you get 10, you'll get a super clam and you can be seen on everyone's radar. Clams will continue to spawn around the map in groups up to four, and if they spawn on turf covered in your ink, they'll be viewable through terrain and on your map. So it's not a terrible idea to spend some extra effort covering areas, but remember, it's not turf war, so try and only cover turf on your way to clams or teammates. The number of clams you're holding is shown above you, and the total number of each team is shown here and here. As mentioned, collecting 10 will get your soup on, so it's smart to stick with 9 until you are ready to push, since once you get a stew going, it'll be tough to flank since everyone can see your punk face. Clams are thrown with the A button, similar to regular bombs in terms of an arc. Smaller ones go farther than soups. You want to slam a soup into the enemy's basket in order to score and break the barrier. At this point, the scoring team's basket goes up, and they're able to throw small clams into the enemy basket to score more points and increase the timer. Once the timer runs up, the barrier is back, and that team that got dunked on will get a pity party and gifted some soup. Small clams are worth 3 and soups are worth 20. If the enemy has a super or two, it's not bad to play defense since if they get one of those bad boys in, you'll be unable to score on them during that time. It's valuable to know you can throw clams at your teammates so they can pick it up. The member with the most clams on your squad is visible to you, so you can be a sneaky deaky and creep over to their basket, toss a clam to someone with nine, and get that soup going without giving them too much alert. When a barrier is down, throwing clams in will add three seconds to the timer. The small platform shows you how close you can be for a super to get nothing but net. Some specials cause you to drop your clams like you drop your spaghetti talking to girls, those being the splashdown and waller. Super jumping to your base will destroy any clams you are holding, so try not to do that. The bubble blower and ink armor can be absolute game changers and are almost essential for pushing a barrier at the later ranks. Brushes are an easy go-to in this mode since you can just slide around collecting clams and running up to baskets. Don't forget that the curling bomb can be incredible here since it can give you a straight swim to Dunktown USA. This mode is very team-based and very difficult to carry on your own. Unless you're me. <laughs> oh, that's not true. It's generally smart to have three as a team and one flanker, generally wielding a brush or roller. Hunting for kills can help, but if you're not picking up clams at your splat and squiddos, you won't be helping too much since by the time you or a teammate gets a soup, they'll likely be respawned. Keep in mind that thrown or dropped clams will break after 10 seconds, so be sure to guard an enemy soup if you splute them, since another one can come up and snag it to continue the job. Doing nothing but throwing soups at the basket will start to rack up a hefty penalty, so try and do it with teammates that are sporting their own little clam harem. This does get intense later on in ranked, and the starter ones will be difficult when you have people that refuse to pick up clams and just want to play turf war, essentially. Overtime happens when the losing team has a superty duperty in play, so be sure you have some covering your basket and send one or two out to 
exploot him and break that big boy. Other than that, just be sure to aim your shots, because if you miss that dunk, it'll be super embarrassing. And I hate you. Why are you on my team? Oh my god, you just cost us the game. Go back to Turf War, you piece of sh-